All right, guys, um, today I'm gonna show you my first attempt at brewing on the origami. So let's get right into it. It is a morning brew. Let's get right into it. I'm recording this clip after I already brewed it, <laughs> but uh, it's when I grab this camera. So I just wanna do a little intro before we get right into the brewing, but let's get, let's get into it. It's my first attempt at using the origami brewer and I figured I'll get a clip for you guys. Good morning friends and welcome back to another video. I'm gonna try to film <laughs> my first attempt at using the origami. So it is early morning, it is early morning, but I wanna get this clip for you guys and see how this goes. Okay, so here's the game plan. I did a little research on using the origami. Um, I think I spoke about it already before, but on the origami, it's a fast brewer. So you're gonna get a, a brew time of maybe some around three minutes, let's say. At least that's what we're hoping for. As a starting point, then we'll dial in from there. So I told you guys about this coffee before. This is the Dunkin', the Dunkin Donuts original blend. This is available here in the United States, absolutely everywhere. You can find it anywhere. And probably worldwide because Dunkin Donuts is worldwide. I believe they sell these little bags at the regular stores and as you can see this is the whole bean so that we can grind it and so that we can get it just the way we want we are i'm gonna start at a setting again in the mornings i always grind on the hand grinder the one z press or easy press okay plus model and i have it set you see the little red dot there i have it set at five and a half usually between four and six is where i set it for the tricklet anywhere in there I'm gonna stay towards the higher end of that because this being a fast brewer, I don't want too many fines and I don't want it to be too too thin so that the water can't push through. And I think at 5.5, it's a good starting point. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna grind 20 grams, 20 grams. I'm gonna look for 300 grams out. So a, a one to 15 ratio on the origami. I think that's uh, acceptable. Maybe we can push it later to one to 16 or something like that. We'll keep, we'll keep playing with it. But let's see what happens. That's where we're gonna start. Let me dose out uh, 20 grams. All right, we're almost there. Okay, actually. All right, that's close enough. We're at 20, let me take this little one out. We're at 20, 20.1. 20 so for our first try, we're gonna use that dosing amount, 20.1. Now I gotta say this coffee has gone up in price. When I bought it uh, this weekend, I think, I wanna say for this, is this, uh, is this one pound, 12 ounces. So it's not even quite, a, it's not quite a pound. So a pound is 16 ounces. So this coffee is just under a pound and I think it was like um, 15 bucks or something like that. So it used to be less than that, but hey, you guys know how, it's, how things are going in the world with the inflation, but still nonetheless, it's way less than getting specialty coffee. And here, let me show it to you guys. Let me give you a close up so you can see it's Okay, so there's a close up of the coffee. It is you know, a, a true medium medium roast. I will call that a true medium. It's not extremely dark. So this coffee is not extremely dark and it does have some, um, there, there is some clarity to it. There is some acidity to it. And it's a interesting flavor. It's not like just like, you know, just burnt. Just, <laughs> it's not one of those uh, uh, overwhelming coffees. This is quite pleasant. And it works for espresso as well. You can use this for espresso. I've used it for espresso. I've used it for pour overs and it's, it's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and grind it. Okay, so we're at 5.5. Let's see how long this takes. I will put it on the screen because I never time it. I just go ahead and grind and then I'll look at the, at the camera at the end and see how long it took and I'll post it here. But, most days, it's only really like 20, 25 seconds. It's extremely fast. It's so much easier to grind 
a medium uh, roast like this one than a dark roast. I'm sorry, then a, then a light roast. A light roast, you have to really fight with it. A medium roast like this, super easy. Okay, before we get started, we're gonna go ahead and rinse the paper and heat up the carafe and the little brewer first. The kettle, by the way, the kettle, this is only like the third time I used it. I used it a couple times to see how it works and to try it out, make sure everything was working fine. And then I just stopped using it because with the tricklet, you don't really need it. You can use any kind of kettle and it's fine. So this is my, fir my first time using it with an origami. So <laughs> let's hope I don't make a mess here. Let's see what happens. So, but it is hot. It's already up to temperature. The, it, I have it at uh, 97 degrees Celsius. So just uh, three degrees below boiling. And I think for this coffee, that's gonna be perfectly fine. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that stream is so easy to like, you could really tell where it's gonna land. I see why people like that uh, that kettle so much and why it's so popular. It's extremely easy to control what's happening here. So let me throw this water out. All right, so we rinsed it. I feel it, it's, it got warm. Let's get our coffee in there. Okay, this. With this uh, hand grinder, there's like no retention. This thing is so awesome. I've, I've said it so many times. You know, now that I know about this and how these work and uh, to tell you the truth, since I, don't put, since I don't pull that many shots of espresso, I think right from the get-go, I would have been better off just getting a hand grinder like this than the Breville Smart Grinder Pro. I don't regret getting it, but but I have to say, this would have just been a better option. This here, this here is an in-game grinder for a lot of people. I mean, I don't see the reason, unless you're, you're pulling a lot of shots one after the next, I don't see any reason to have anything better than this. this it's awesome, I love it. Okay, so here's the game plan. I'm gonna try to make, this is a, just a chopstick, and I'm going to try to make like a hole right in the middle and I'll show you guys in a second, but there's a purpose to this. Okay, again, it's the first time I'm trying it, so... All right, it's nice and level. I think we're ready. Let me show you guys. I might have to add more light here. Let me turn on some more lights. I mean, it is early morning, so I, you know, this is just the lights here, but give me a second. Okay, now with that light, you'll be able to see a little bit, but so what I did, Anyway, I, I think I could just lift it. I'll show you guys like this. Okay, there you go. Now you could see it for sure. So there you see, that's, that was my plan because on my first pour, on my very first pour, what I wanna do is just drop the water right in the middle and let it go up until I hit 100 grams. So my first pour is gonna be 100 grams and I'm going to pour right in the middle and just come up until I hit the 100 grams. And now what I wanna, uh, achieve with that is just kind of saturate all the coffee all at the same time as quickly as possible for blooming and after that then we'll pour from the metal and, and swirl as as we go towards the outside of the brewer and that I don't know that's the the method to the madness here all right so let's start the timer and I'm gonna go with my first 100 grams right in the middle Okay, I see what people say about keeping it level. Again, first time I'm using it, so I was hoping for that process to have taken a whole minute. And the water's almost drained out. It was only 40 seconds. We'll see.
Yeah, I could definitely see why people say that, uh, you know, it's just, it's kind of a little annoying that it's wobbly like that. I don't know if that's gonna make any difference in real life, but we'll see. Okay, so I let it go for a minute. It's still dripping, so let's do another 100 grams. So now I am gonna go around the sides because I see where the coffee has come up, like on the edges. We're gonna go up to 200 grams here. Wow, using this thing is a real pleasure. I could see why people like it so much. It is so easy to hold, so easy to control the stream as it's coming out, and you can saturate the coffee just the way you want. <laughs> Super easy. The stand holds the temperature, so it's steady at 97. You put it back on there, it'll, it'll keep it at 97 the whole time as you're going through your process. All right, so we're getting up to two minutes. Let me show you guys a different view. All right, so there you see the kettle. You can see, you can see the temperature there. Okay, holding steady at 97. I'm not sure if you can see our bed of coffee. Now I can definitely not lift it and make a mess. I'm not sure if you can see it well there, but it's looking nice. It's, I gotta say, for my first try, that's how much coffee we got out so far. You see we're at 204.4, we're up to two and a half minutes. All right, let's go for the third pour. Let's go 100 more grams. This time I'm gonna go again from the edges, go around. So there is coffee. Let me, let me show you guys. I'm not sure if I pointed that out, but. All right, so my first pour, my first pour was, and I, you can't really tell, at least I can't see it too well on the camera here. Let me, let me see if I put this. Obviously this, this, this process is gonna take way too long today because I'm explaining and looking at this and experimenting, but as you could see the coffee bed just it's it's all the way up here but the middle part is way more in so i'm going to try to push this down so i'm going to pour around the edge and work my way in okay so that's that's the plan here for the third pour put this back on here you know i think our total brewing time is going to be right it's it's probably been right around three minutes but because i have spent so much time explaining and showing you guys then this is going to be different but Let's see what happens here. Third pour. Wow, this is so easy to control and I'm not even good at it. So this time I am washing all the coffee from around the sides. Okay, we're at 300. This is our final drawdown. Pretty sure you guys could see it there. So we're right at 300 grams, 300.6. And it's up to like five minutes, but we have spent like half of that time just talking and explaining. So <laughs> I don't think this will be the perfect cup of coffee, but it doesn't look bad. I think I did better than, than what I was expecting. So now the bed is not too flat. That of course was my, from my pouring technique. I have to get better at that, obviously. Okay, that's it. It's pretty much done. Let's see what we ended up with as soon as it well, I guess I could stop it now. It's at uh, five and a half minutes, but I think like two minutes. Maybe we would have finished like 3.30, maybe four minutes. Uh, next time, I'll do less explaining and more pouring and <laughs> I'll tell you guys about it. All right, we're done with the scale. I think for my first try, it really is not too bad. Let me see, can you? Yeah, you could see the, the bed of coffee there, but you could see where it's not, you know, it's it's not flat and nice, but we'll try next time, try to get it better. 
but the coffee looks strong <laughs> strong let's see what happens all right let me see if i can lift this and not make a mess okay maybe there you guys could see it a little bit better but that's what we ended up with it's not the prettiest bed <laughs> but it doesn't look too muddy i think my grind size was just about right i i might want to go a little bit coarser coffee looks nice let's try it all right so you guys saw everything was it didn't go smooth and didn't go as planned everything didn't go extremely well but i think for being my first attempt i'm happy with it i think i'm happy with it let's see what the what the coffee tastes like that's the main thing right hopefully we got a good cup so let's try it out let's see what this is all about the origami first attempt All right, so these cups here are designed to fill up to where the double wall ends. All right, you know, the aroma is a uh, regular Duncan. I've had it before, <laughs> familiar. You know, it's perfectly fine. I think I've gotten better brews on the triclet. I think I could definitely do better with the, with the origami. But for being the first attempt, this is, this is fine, this is great. I'm surprised there's not more acidity, but you know, you get spoiled. <laughs> you get spoiled having the specialty coffees and trying these, this, you know, it's just so much, more interesting let's say you can't really say better there's people out there that will probably like this a lot better because it's just what they're used to you know and specialty is something that you gotta build your palate you gotta get used to it and then you just start appreciating it for what it is you know you start appreciating the little subtle differences between the coffees you start appreciating those levels of acidity and brightness where it feels like you're having a like a piece of fruit or citrus or, well, most citruses are fruit or are, are all citruses fruit? I, I'm not sure, but, but anyway, you know what I'm saying? Um, like, I, like I always say, specialty is a little bit more special, <laughs> but there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. This is a, an excellent cup being my first attempt. I'm happy with it. Now from today's brew, the thing I'm the most surprised about is the kettle. I mean, I see why people like it for pour overs. And on the triclet, again, it wouldn't make any difference because you would just kind of like, you don't have to control anything. You don't even see the grinds, the grinds are below. So you just pour into the little screen and it drains down and that's it. So there's really nothing to it. But on something like this, where you want to kind of manipulate where the coffee is at and you want to wash it down from the sides, you don't want to spill anything over or all of a sudden a bunch of water comes out. It is just so easy to control and so well made. It's a pleasure to use, it really is. Uh, you know, you get into the hobby and then you just start enjoying all these tools more and more. So, oh, I wanted to talk about a couple of, a couple of things I said I would I reached out to the people, answered them on, on a comment that was left. And I told them that I would, uh, first of all, I believe the name is Joan. Joan, she's watching from the UK. One, our, one of our new friends here in our little coffee club. Uh, she suggested that if I wanna keep my tamping uh, more consistent to maybe consider the, the Normcore, I believe it's the Normcore version four or V4. A tamper which is a spring-loaded tamper so it controls how much pressure you're you're putting into the tamping and it also helps you to keep it level maybe let, let's see if I can find online a picture of it and maybe put it here so that you guys could see you know those of you that are deep down the rabbit hole of coffee making <laughs> this whole thing you know exactly what I'm talking about but you might not be familiar with that tamper. So I'll try to find a picture online and, and put it here so you guys could see. But 
This Normcore Tampler, I have kept my eye on it. It's something that I do wanna get. You always wanna get more and more tools. But here's the thing, I wanna get better at manual tamping. So I haven't, I haven't gotten it kind of like on purpose because I think by now I would have gotten it, but I wanna keep practicing. I wanna get better at manual tamping and that's probably the reason why I haven't gotten the, the Normcore Tamper because I really like it. I think it's awesome. And it's a tool that I'll, you know, eventually I'll get it. I'm sure I will. So thank you, Joe, for reaching out. I really appreciate the comment. Um, and our little community keeps, uh, keeps building. I appreciate every single one of you. I'm so surprised when people tell me that they watched the whole video. <laughs> this last one, you know, I'm recording this before I put my video that I already finished. I haven't, I haven't uploaded it yet and I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up splitting that video. If I don't split it, it's gonna be an hour long video. <laughs> oh my God, that is crazy. So I might split it into two uh, half an hour parts. This video is very easy to split, so I might split it. But if I don't, it's just gonna be like a one hour long video. Regardless, either way, I'm gonna post, um, like I always do, I'll post both of them the same day at the same time. So whoever wants to see the whole thing, just watch the two back-to-back -back videos. But yeah, sometimes I just keep talking and it just time goes and you know, I enjoy it. So I enjoy it. Well, if you guys are having your morning coffee right now with me, cheers. I'm here to keep you company. A little small talk, little chit chat. Okay, now that it's cooling, I'm getting a little bit more of the acidity. And some of those flavors are starting to come out. Obviously nothing like a nice light roll specialty, not like that, but this is perfectly fine. For your average consumer, as a matter of fact, they might like this better. It's just because it's what they're used to, you know? So you give this to an average consumer, and I always try to give you guys the average consumer, you know, point of view. An average consumer will be perfectly fine with this. And as a matter of fact, they might like this better. So for espresso, for espresso, cause I have used this for espresso, your average consumer might appreciate something a little darker. Uh, like what we've been making lately, the liquid amber, or like the one I've had before from Matador, their, uh, I think they call it a, a Italian espresso blend. I believe it's what they call it. And that coffee is very good for making milk-based drinks. So something like that, a little bit darker, they might appreciate that a little bit more for pour over or for, you know, drip coffee or something. This is probably what they're most used to. And your average consumer will be perfectly fine with this. This is, you can drink this black, no problem. This is a, you know, nice coffee. So yeah, Joan, thank you for, for joining our little club here. And uh, I got another comment from Chris. Okay, Chris, I don't know where he's watching from. I don't know what kind of equipment he's using. You know, it's fun when you guys tell me where you're watching from. It's cool, like somebody in the UK is interested in my videos. I'm all the way in Florida, in a different country. It's, it's just so cool to me. I You know, the world has gotten so small that you can have friends like from all over and who knows? Life go, has so many twists and turns. You never know. I One day might get to have coffee with somebody that's watching from another country. That would be so awesome, so cool. But anyway, so the other comment came from Chris and I don't know where he's watching from, but uh, I do wanna address something that Chris said, a, a comment uh, on the video that we made, the one that, that I had the picture in picture going on and I try to do the, I was trying to record the tutorial and everything went wrong, everything got all mixed up. So, okay, what happened, Chris, what happened was that, you know, I tried, at the beginning, I was gonna show, so my idea was to do the tutorial as to somebody that had just bought the infuser, like my machine, and they didn't have a grinder, they didn't get a grinder at all. So, they have to use, like, coffee from the store that's already ground, like pre-ground coffee, pre-ground espresso. So I had some pre-ground espresso, very little, that I had left. But sometimes I use it for the mocha pot. That's the only time I ever use that. It's like a, it's called Bustelo. It's a, <laughs> in the Cuban community, it's very popular. Let's just say it's very popular. 
and it's what a lot of people use in their house to make in the mocha pot. So that's why I had it. And, um, but okay, so when I try to tamp it, I had the pressurized basket. I started with the pressurized basket because that's the only way you can use pre-ground coffee because it's not fine enough. It's not fine enough. So the only way you can hope to get the right pressure and the right timing is by using the pressurized basket. So I tried to tamp it, but you guys saw that when I would tamp, it, it was not staying stuck. The, the coffee was just falling out. It was completely loose. I was never able to figure that out. I, I, I was never able to make coffee with the pressurized basket and the pre-ground coffee from the store. It never worked. Okay, I tried it once on camera and I tried it once uh, on, on my own and I, and I just couldn't, I couldn't get it to work. So Chris, if you, have, if you have an idea that can help me, maybe you've used like regular store-bought pre-ground coffee and maybe you know what you're doing with that, but I couldn't figure it out. It was just a mess. You guys saw the watering mess. Again, that was a few videos back. And let me see if I, if I can put the thumbnail right here so you guys could see the video, exactly the video I'm talking about. So anyway, it, it was a total fail. A total fail, I didn't go back to trying to use it. So on that video, what I did, I started with the pressurized and the store-bought pre-ground coffee. Then, since I saw that's not working, I just went to the, my usual routine. I used the two double shot, unpressurized, the regular basket, unpressurized, and I went to that and I ground my own coffee and then it worked, you know. I, mm, <laughs> that's what it, you know, that's what I've always done is the way I learned and the only thing I've ever done. I, I never had played with a pressurized basket and for me, it turned out to be a total fail and I was not able to figure it out. So, Chris, thank you for the comment. I appreciate it. Welcome to our little community, our little club here. If you have any tips on how to make that work, <laughs> you know, maybe I'll try it on a later video, but I couldn't get it. As it cools, it gets better and better. As a matter of fact, it, it definitely gets better and better as it cools. These cups are, you know, they, they do kind of funnel the, the, the scent of the coffee like more towards you. A lot of that could be placebo, okay? <laughs> I, I know. You know, another cool thing about these cups, let me see if I find that clip. I'll put that here as well. But these cups are really cool to make Irish coffee. Okay, you know, with a little bit of whiskey and the coffee and the uh, cream on top. It creates like a waterfall, like cascading. It looks very, very pretty. If I find the clip, I'll put, put it here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So yeah, Irish coffee. That's the only coffee I'll make at night. You know, um, every now and then I'll go ahead and make a little Irish coffee at night, especially if it's cold outside. So it's a rare occasion here in Florida, but we do sometimes get a, some nice chilly nights and that is a, always a good fun time to make Irish coffee. Another thing we need to try to make, a, a few people have asked me about Turkish coffee. So I am a fan. I am a fan of Turkish coffee as well. One day we'll make that. The thing about Turkish coffee is the grind size. It's like powder. It has to be like dust. You know, it's really, really extremely fine, as fine as you can get it. But I have store-bought already pre-ground Turkish coffee is what I've been using to make Turkish coffee. It tastes good. I like it. Uh, when I make Turkish coffee, I do like adding a tiny little bit of sugar, maybe like a half a teaspoon, just a little bit of sweetness to it. And it's lovely. I mean, I, I, I love it. I would say it's about as concentrated as the mocha pot, something like that. That's what you end up with. Definitely more concentrated than, than something like this. All right, guys, so I grabbed another morning clip for you guys. I know I'm not on my best. <laughs> like I told you guys before, I'm not an actor. I'm just some dude. I got to get ready for work. Right now, it's 7 a.m. I started this whole process like an hour ago, like at 6 a.m. Usually around 6.30, it's when I go to the gym. And I go to the gym from like 6.30 to 7.30 a.m. You know, then I leave everything ready. By the time I leave to the gym, everything's ready. All I have to do is get back, take a shower, and grab my stuff and go to work. So that's my process. Obviously today, 
there won't be any gym. The gym time went into coffee making time. So I can't, I can't do this for you guys every day. But it was our first time with the origami. You know what? I'm gonna consider it a success. All right, I'm gonna consider it a success. This worked out very well. The color of the coffee, I gotta say it came out, the strength of it is it's right, on point. This is the right strength for this coffee. I've had it many times. So today, a one to 15 ratio, so 20 grams of ground coffee, 300 grams out, worked out perfectly. Now my pouring technique, I gotta work on that. I like what I did with the first pour, starting from the middle and just go right into the middle and come up so that the water kind of has a chance to saturate all the grounds at the same time. I think I'm gonna continue with the same recipe and just keep working on it and hopefully get it better. The only thing missing here, I would say, because I've made this coffee on the triplet many times, and as drip coffee as well, when I, when I was doing drip coffee. Now it's always been pour overs on the triplet, and now you're gonna see the origami. So, I know I can get a little bit more brightness out of it. I know I can get a little bit more acidity out of it. So that's what I'm gonna shoot for next time. So I think I'm gonna grind a little bit coarser. I think the water temperature was spot on. I'm gonna keep going with that, with 97 Celsius. So, I think I did pretty good for my first try. Anyway, guys, I'm glad I was able to keep you company for a few minutes. I'm gonna have to hurry up a little bit here and finish this coffee and start getting ready for work. But thank you for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, thank you for the, the comments, the messages. I really appreciate it. Check me out on Instagram if you wanna communicate. Um, you know, it's sometimes it's easier on, on Instagram, so you can send me a DM, but again, I really appreciate the comments below. It helps the YouTube algorithm. It helps to grow the channel a little bit. Hopefully we, one day we can maybe get up to the 1,000 subscribers that we need to do little live shows. And uh, if we make it, then we'll do some little live shows. They will be shorter videos. I'm pretty sure. I don't think I can um, you know, do really long videos on a live. So anyway, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to keep you company here for a few minutes. Enjoy the rest of your coffee and I have to, I have to get ready for work. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.